sorry to hear that. Yeah, um, people say it lasts a couple of weeks. You know, I, I actually started it like Sunday night. Or, do, you, Sunday night. do you have the one with the real bad sore throat? Well, at the end, you have a sour sore throat that I, won't go away. Okay, no, you haven't had that yet. Okay, well. Yeah, you, got the, you know, the headaches and the, and the blahs and you know, no energy. Well, somebody asked this pessimist, how long are you sick for? Well, in two weeks, it'll be six weeks. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, and I gotta go visit the kids tomorrow. Oh. All right. Well, what do you got for questions? Because I know okay. Mom emailed some stuff to you earlier this yes. week, and he actually suggested a couple for Patty. So. Okay. Well, yeah. Patty had already given me one. Oh, it's good. Where are the <laughs> mistakes that sellers make? Yeah. So, what was that? What are the most common mistakes that sellers make? Which is a very common good mistakes that sellers make. All yeah. right. And then one of the ones that Mom had for you, which uh, which was I've been reading a lot about crowdfunding sites hearing them on the radio. I'm interested in investing in real estate, but I want to know what the difference is between all of these companies, including yours. So that's a good one to talk about. I like the one that, and we could talk about, this is not necessarily as a question, but um, um, so Nam said uh, he found an article saying, and this must have been at the IJ and I missed it, the median price in Marin fell 14% year over year, the only county in the Bay Area opposed to decline which we all know with media, media is yeah. like almost useless because there's so few transactions it here. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't the figure involves single family homes in Marin, which dropped from a median of 1.125 to 965. Do you think this trend will continue in Marin? It's, it's not, not a, a trend. trend. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth talking about. I know, it's you hardly know, worth and it. And I, I personally produce those numbers that go to the IJ, and I, you know, there's a delicate line of my common sense, my own kind of anyway. <laughs> It's well, not what we're talking about. right. It's well, it's it's worth talking about in that it's worth saying to the audience it's Don't not worry, worth even it's about. not worth getting excited about the newspaper articles that focus on median price. I think is I think that's where the topic is. And again, we don't have to well, go. Well, no, there. it's just such a small sample in Marin. That's yeah. really well, Marin anyway, maybe in other counties. And so it's that's not what we're talking about because Marin's so small. That's and true. Be so it's yeah. not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll skip. I mean, if we've got again, I'm just looking for. I don't know if you've got some. What well, good the you brought market up, came alive. Want. It really is starting to come alive. It's okay. Doing, yeah. Wow. Well, so okay. that's, that's something we can talk about. The last couple of times we were saying that it was kind of slowing down. Well, no one yeah. ever really knows. You know, this time of year, there's always a guessing game as to what uh, what's going to happen. And of course, I think one of the. Well, we'll talk about each other. But it's pretty predictable. Good. Every year, right around now, buyers come out, sellers aren't. Things get snapped up. I just put oh. some five five million. Yesterday, just oh, five million. Yeah. So, so <laughs> who wants to start? What do you want to start with? You got an article you want to start with, um, Patty, or? Do you, um, uh, I don't have an article, but just really kind of talking about seasonality and now what's a good time to sell. And then there's a lot of like eight, okay. eight top reasons okay. the sellers, yeah. sellers mistake sellers make. You know. All right. And is that part of, but that's your question, that's your right? Question. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. One is seasonality and one's yeah, the, seasonality. The, yeah. But that's a good, that's a good way to start. Yeah. Ready? All right, let's, let's take it. Welcome, you're listening to The Best of Investing. I'm your host, Edward Brown. I'm proud to have as my co-host, Mark Hahn of Pacific Private Money, one of California's fastest growing mortgage investment firms, and Patty Cohen of Pacific Union International. And for those of you new to our show, imagine if you guys or gals sitting around a bar having drinks without the drinks, talking business with you, the audience listening in. Our phone number is 888-912-1190. Use that number to answer the trivia questions for three tanning certificates given away during this show. Those certificates are not sponsored by the radio station, but by Tan Bella Tanning Salon with two locations in San Francisco and one in Marin. Got to check them out. And we need that this time of year. I'm I feeling mean, mighty white this yeah. time. <laughs> or pale, I guess I should pale, say. Yes. No <laughs> and, uh, today's trivia theme is just going to be general trivia. Um, Patty, you got some good stuff to talk about. Well, yeah, the market is finally coming alive. And it's it's typical and predictable, you know. We we but it particularly contrast to last year, where everybody just collectively wanted the year to be over, and then everyone collectively got sick, and then the holidays were here. So it's a and then of course rain. So all of you know the rain is good, but all of these things made us really sluggish, lethargic, not going out of the house, and and there was no market. And it's tough to have open houses when it's pouring rain out. Yeah. Yeah. And generally, the first couple of weeks of, of January aren't the greatest time. But what's happening now, the good news about that is that very low. 
very predictable. I will tell you this is the best time of year, just starting like the end of January through the end of February. And right Usually after the Super Bowl, though, right? Uh, sort of after the Super Bowl. Well, I don't know if that's is that. I was going to ask you that is the, is that whole after the Super Bowl thing still hold, or is it really just right around now, mid to late January is a good time to start. I think mid to late home. January because what I happens is you know the first of all there's no inventory, and then the buyers come out now. They, mm-hmm. they are afraid, especially in times of low inventory. Even if they've got kids in the school district, they're afraid they're not going to find something. Okay, and is it is it possible too that, you know, and I'm just going to do stereotype guys and gals, yeah, you know, where the where the wives say, husband, you know, you go ahead and watch your football game. Exactly. I'm going to check out the houses and I'll let you know if there's something interesting. All of the above. Okay. And then the, and then then we have ski week and then we have spring break and now it's the end of school and we don't have a house and we, you know, we're, you know right um, and and they have been maybe looking for a year or two and they can't find anything so they get a jump on it. So I sort of take the contrary view of things. Uh, meaning, look what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. Yeah. So all of the sellers say, I'm not going out in the rain. My house looks pretty in the spring with my flowers. Well, everybody's on a level playing field. Come out here now when nobody's there and all the buyers are, and the buyers are in a frenzy like they have got to find something and they'll overbid it. They'll do preemptive offers. I mean, I just put several things in escrow just because they were afraid they weren't yeah. going to get it. I'm going to ask you too, uh, kind of a generic question here. Yeah, do you find that that your first offer is usually your best one. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I, I've you know, heard maybe, that before. I wasn't sure. It, it anyway. just almost always is, unless you're in a rising market and you want to wait six months, and the market will catch up. You know, but it generally is. Maybe not the offer, but the offerer, and just work okay. with them, and they'll come up. Interesting. And again, because the longer a property's on, the lower the buyer's going to go. Yeah. You know. So okay. Patty, let's let's get back to what, what you said about the you know the market is is heating back up again. So what is that? mean to you? Does it mean that there's a lot more listings or there's more transactions or there's activity, open house? I mean, what, what, is it, well, how, let's what say, does that look like? Yeah, you know, it, let's just say the last, you know, four weeks, six weeks, it was really dead. And since the election, people people froze. And and then they got sick and then we had rain and then we had holidays. And, and that's still all the <laughs> above in the mix. You know, so, so it was dead. And, and in rain, people really don't come out, buyers or sellers. So now we're in the third week of January, and people are coming out, and there's nothing you can look at. So, so if you've so got something it's to sell, alive. if you've got something to sell, put it on right now. Actually, have three open properties that are ready to go put on. It on. One that's on the one that open house this weekend, and then the other two are, are coming out next weekend. So I'm Smart. actually pretty excited. I'm, I'm hopeful, and, and we we didn't time it that way. I, I had hoped to go to market in the fourth quarter. Now I'm actually kind of excited that. Uh, um, you know, holding costs are a little bit more, but uh, these are these are flip properties, so I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Perfect. And Oakland's still been, or neighborhoods in Oakland and Berkeley have still maintained uh, uh, a pretty good price appreciation. So and do you think the, the, the election being over and things kind of settling down, people are less uh, concerned about all these changes? Uh, I think we're uh, we are definitely in a tour. We're hiding in that wave of buyers market. I okay. mean. That's not to say it's a red hot seller's market still. It's just a good time right now to put it on. And it's really smart, Mark, to put yours on now because most people think, and I, that's, I would say that is the biggest fallacy in real estate. That people, so the papers, by the time the papers were reported, they're saying, Art, is it May and June the best time? May and June, it's over. March and April, it's good, but February, March, January, right now, the best. Interesting, interesting. You got another minute before we go to uh, break. Well, you know, we mentioned the the election, and of course, um, we now finally officially have a new president. And you know, we're talking about the real estate market, but there's also, you know, the real estate market isn't completely immune to what happens to the stock market and what happens to financial markets. And really, we don't we're we're still in a in a, in a uh, position where we don't know what's going to happen. So the stock market last week, it's funny. I remember on Thursday, I, I get these little notifications on my phone, and it said stocks drop sharply due to um, you know upcoming uh, unknowns about upcoming election or upcoming. Inaugural. Inaugural. Thank you. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, first I'm saying, how does anybody know that that's exactly. the reason why the stock dropped? Right. And, it just, it, and what's going to happen in inaugural? He's going to get signed in. Right. Just, some some guys aren't going to sing. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> There's more sellers and buyers. That's why it dropped. Yeah. It's okay. I tell you what, we're going to go to our first commercial break. Before we do, quick mention here for the Flamingo Resort and Spa uh, in the heart of Sonoma County, uh, Wine Country. Excuse me. 
Uh, enjoy a unique historical landmark, the Flamingo Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Features uh, a couple of heated pools, tennis, uh, poolside dining, weekend live music, health club, yoga style studio, and stay fit while relaxing and touring nearby Sonoma Valley wineries. Visit FlamingoResort.com. I've, che I've checked that place out. It's kind of cool. Okay, here's our first trivia question. The whiskey called bourbon is distilled from a fermented mash composed of at least 51% of what grain? Don't touch that dial. The best of investing will be right back. Call 888-912-1190 to answer that question. There's a very long article in the IJ about that exact thing. I read it, thought it was interesting, but forgot everything about it. About the bourbon? Yeah, well, oh, really? there's that guy that writes for the Lynn IJ every Saturday. Oh. He writes, uh, and he happened to write about the difference between whiskey, rye, bourbon, all of those oh. spirits. Yeah. Like what is what? Yeah. What is single malt? What's, yeah, you know, know this, that? I, yeah. all, all I know is, is I, I've never been able to grow taste buds to appreciate any of that stuff yeah. at all. It's, it's really like, hardcore stuff. Oh, yeah, that guy that writes that column, yeah. man. He is. He tries oh, he to be, you know, Buckeye. Buckeye, yeah. Yeah, right, and right. he's so arrogant. You know, and he's, <laughs> he, every single time he's complaining about a customer and how they're acting. It's like, yeah. they're customers. Just take care of them. Exactly. You know. She walked into a fur coat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anyway. It's funny I read those and I actually get, you know, I get, um, it, it, I get, Angry from his point of view, like, oh, those people are just like, you know, but I, it's funny, I can see it from, from your perspective too. Well, it's kind of like getting another job then. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people would like that job. Yeah. Anyway. Good Thanks for a good call. Okay. Uh, what are we going to next? Well, I'm just, I'll just I'll, um, dovetail a little bit okay. more into um, just the stock market. All right. And, uh, Welcome back to The Best of Investing. Again, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hoff and Patty Cohen. First trivia question. The whiskey called bourbon is distilled from a fermented mash composed at least 51% of what grain? Wheat. Corn. Corn. There you Corn. go. There you go. Corn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, take it away. So we, we, the first thing that we're talking a little about real estate and how, uh, um, you know, Patty has noticed that the activity has, has begun heating up and it's a good time to put a, a home on the market now. And, and I know, uh, Patty, you and I both, and, and Edward, too, we're all um, in, you know, focused mostly on the real estate market, and we're real estate investors and real estate lenders. And, Patty, you're a real estate seller and lister. Um, we, you know, we always talk about the relationship uh, on the show about uh, uh, between the, what's happening in the stock markets, interest rates, uh, and the real estate market. And I know I believe the three of us are all pretty bullish about the real estate market for 2017. And what's interesting, the stock market has gone up quite a bit uh, since the election of Trump, but it's been stalling a little bit leading up to the inauguration. And I've got an article here that uh, says, uh, that predicts that investors might be bracing for a massive mark stock market sell-off after the election. And they're actually talking about how there have been an unusual amount of options uh, purchased. Uh, you know, I'm not a stock market expert, so when you get into you know call options and and, uh, and this and that puts, I don't I don't I don't yeah. know what's going on there. But it just it talks about that. Uh, it says if options traders are correct, stocks are in for a wild ride in February. Demand for one month call options. Again, I have no idea what that is. Tied to CBOE volatility volatility index. Blah, 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 blah. Well, exactly. It basically says that uh, the, 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 the increased demand suggests that some investors are bracing for a sell-off following the inauguration of President Trump. So, um, you know, articles like this, you know, they the heck out of me because it's like it's not, you know, a, a, a vast market sell-off on February, on February 1 based on a number of um, stock options. Where's the economic fundamentals behind that? Yeah. I mean, is the stock market based on economic fundamentals, or is it based, or is it basically a big game of roulette? And more often than not, these wild gyrations in stock market index prices over the last several years that we've um, experienced uh, are often just driven by news and and uh, some of it, you know, 
dreams that doesn't even uh, come true. Just, just uh, true. Yeah. And, and meanwhile, you know, the real estate market just keeps chugging along, chugging along, chugging along. We've enjoyed low interest rates, uh, price appreciation. Um, we don't know yet whether we're at the top of the of the uh, real estate cycle, and many predict we're still going to see uh, uh, increases in California, the Bay Area. In, uh, in other words, home price appreciation going into 17 and even 18. I just I'm not hearing anyone calling for a recession yet. But if you're a stock market index investor, you know, and, and yes, you've seen, you know, double digit uh, returns in the last six months, but, uh, um, you know, what's the outlook for the remainder of the year? Are there the, the fundamentals in place for continued stock market uh, price appreciation? Or is it time to maybe, you know, evaluate whether it's time to move some stuff out? I don't know. That's really between you and your, your stock market advisor, your financial planner. But uh, I'm here to say that, uh, uh, at Pacific Private Money, we have an investment option for our clients called the Pacific Private Money Fund that ended the year in 2016 paying 7.8% on a distributed interest yield secured by mortgages. And since be because we are bullish here uh, at the Best of Investing on real estate and we continue to lend at Pacific Private Money uh, short-term loans to real estate investors and home buyers, uh, we're extremely um, pleased with the results of, of our fund, and even though past performance is not a promise of future results, we're predicting between 7.5% and 8% distributed yield for the fund this year based on current loan demand. And so, again, just in the interest of always be on the lookout for, um, for opportunities to, uh, you know, to kind of mix it up a little bit in your investment portfolio, diversify. You know, if you're nervous about the stock market, maybe you think it's time, uh, like others uh, are predicted to do in February, to take some profits. Maybe you do want to uh, readjust your portfolio. If you're looking for some high yield options, but with safety and security features in a Pacific Private Money Fund, and we have a number of those, we'd love to share them with you. Uh, but if uh, somewhere between 7.5% and 8% uh, yield uh, um, created by a fund that is solely created to make real estate secured loans at 70% loan to value or better, uh, you know, go at yourself to, to check us out, uh, go to our website. Uh, we just launched a uh, it's the fourth generation of the Pacific Private Money website. It's at, well, yes, PacificPrivateMoney.com. Fancy that, PacificPrivateMoney.com. You can get more information about uh, about that. Your, your, your average loan to value, though, isn't 70%. No, it's actually less than 60% in the fund. We have uh, a little over 70 loans in the fund right now. The assets under management of the Pacific Private Money Fund is, is just under $25 million. We're in the process of growing that fund. Uh, the current offering is registered for up to $50 million, and that would be probably around you know, 150 loans uh, probably uh, there, most of them in the Bay Area. And it's a wide range of loans. We have loans as low as 10% loan to value, 20% loan to value, 40% loan to value, and, a, and quite a few of them that are 70%. I mean, we do make a lot of purchase uh, loans, short-term purchase loans for people who got to close by next Friday, or, or yeah. maybe their conventional financing isn't going to come through, and they're in escrow, and they're, maybe their deposit's not refundable, uh, and they're looking for a plan B to close. So we do a lot of those, and oftentimes we're giving out the max um, financing, which is... Uh, Right now, seventy percent of the of the purchase price. So that, uh, but the but you're right. The weighted average loan to value in the fund is uh, under sixty percent. So it's again, you know, it's it's worth investigating. It used to be called the, the best kept secret in investing. Um, and we refer to it as mortgage investing, uh, but more specific, it's a mortgage pool fund uh, that you do investing in. We've got over hundred investors in there right now who are uh, earning just uh, just under eight percent. And, and we've got some, we've got some great loan files. Uh, business is good. Business is up. Uh, in fact, it never stopped for the holiday, which was the interesting oh, thing. Interesting. You know, the holidays fell on the weekends. So, it, you know, we were able to keep our offices <coughs> open all the way through the holidays. And there was no um, there was no decline. Sometimes in January, there's kind of a swoon. And, uh, and a lot of mortgage loan originators, the first two, two or three weeks of January, don't uh, trying to kind of restart their pipeline. And we didn't have any of that. In fact, we, we had our best December ever, and uh, we're on pace for having the largest January ever at the 
to the plan of balance. So, wow. Yeah, for more information, uh, if you need a short-term source to borrow money to close a real estate transaction, or if you're an investor looking for um, you know, looking for ways to boost the yield you earn on your savings, or just a place to park your money and, and earn uh, between 7.5% and 8%, uh, you really need to check us out, pacificprivatemoney.com. Of course, you can call us here in the Red Wing of the Bay Area, 415-883-2150. All right, we're going to cut to our uh, second commercial break here with the trivia question. Actor Will Smith was nominated for a number of acting awards for his portrayal of what athlete in what 2001 film. The uh, first caller with the correct answer is going to win the free uh, tanning certificate. Call 888-912-1190. We'll touch that dial. The best of investing will be right back. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. Right on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go tanning anymore. And Bella. Nope. You going to come to the... Uh, I am That's coming, good. yes, and I'm bringing um, a friend of mine who's going to be inheriting a lot of money, and she does not go without um, any, oh, so she's okay. going to be bringing it up to good, me a nice. lot of stuff. Um, at, her mom passed away, and the house is, is worth like probably four million. Her mom went to HR Block, so come on, how much do you think she knows? And yeah. So she's, she's just very naive about financial stuff. We used to call it HR Blockhead. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I, I received a request yesterday for a loan. Um, the first, this guy wanted to do a second of like 150000 behind like 900000 or something. I don't know, behind like 600000 a property worth like a million or something. Oh, like, oh. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. But the, the, the first mortgage is a private lender. I said, well, I said we can probably even give you a better rate if yeah. he lets if he subordinates. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll be a first. Yeah. And like, oh, okay. Well, let me ask you. Because well, why yeah. would he do that? Oh, <laughs> uh, just because he might he might live, let him the second mortgage anyway. Yeah. It's like a family. It's a cousin. Right. So, but if he doesn't, then we got some good stuff going there. All right. Okay. Uh, we go into email. Email. Yeah. yeah. Email for uh, for Patty with my cousin. So. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. One more time, I'm Edward Brown, along with Mark Hunt and Patty Cohen. Uh, before we get to the answer of our trivia question, we do want to make a, a little mention here for visiting San Francisco's legendary Alcatraz Island. Planning ahead is a must. I don't know if you know this. If you ever try to go to Alcatraz, you definitely have to get tickets ahead of time. Didn't know that. Go to www.alcatrazcruises.com, the guaranteed lowest price for Alcatraz tickets. It's a very cool uh, um <laughs> Sounds good. Cool place to go. Cool place to go. Okay. Second trivia question was, actor Will Smith was nominated for a number of acting awards for his portrayal <coughs> of what athlete in what 2001 film? Ali. That's right. Oh, Very good. Muhammad Ali. All right, Patty, you received an email uh, from a listener that says, what are the most common mistakes that sellers make? That's a good question. Oh, it is such a good question. Um, there are so many. But just starting from, <laughs> and, and, sellers. you know, hopefully people don't make them all. But, I mean, just starting from before it gets on the market, one is over improving your property. You know, uh, you should all, when you buy a property, you should be thinking about selling it and what you're <laughs> and, and thinking about resale, really. So over improving for the neighborhood. And even if you have in the best neighborhood around, if you've over improved it and you put, you know, gold in the floors, you're probably not going to get it back. Exactly. Um, and then secondly, is not getting in permits for improvements that need it. Uh -huh. Because you'll either, if it, you know, the common one is just not, you know, water heater or something, but you know, you can get a retroactive permit and there's tons of fines, but you can add a room addition and that really doesn't have a lot of value if you don't get a permit for it. Wow, and is it typical kitchens and bathrooms are the typical ones where you get value? Uh, yeah, you get value, but some people are confused about what needs permit and some people don't get permits. Even at that, you might, you kind of might ruin what you got, but yeah, the value is in kitchens and bathrooms. Okay, so if they did it without a permit, do they go back and ask for a permit and pay the fines? Yes, they can, and the fines are pretty steep, And but also, what was it done to code? Was it done by a yeah. licensed contractor? All of that. You know, sometimes people just have the brother-in-law come in there, whatever. Okay. Um, so those two things, before you put it on the market, be thinking about that. And then, just as you're about to put it on the market, think about, the, the third mistake is not paying any attention to curb appeal. It's all about detailing your house and doing oh, the windows, yeah. but curb appeal. 
because more than ever, people are shopping on the internet. That's the first um, sure. course of street view. Yeah, yeah. that's the first line of defense. But mm -hmm. second to that is I'm going to drive by. I'm not even going to let my realtor know I have any interest. If you drive by and it doesn't measure up, it, it's it might fall down right there, you know. So, uh, and I would say a, a fourth reason would be not properly preparing your home for sale. Um, so not only curb appeal, but the inside, you know, I totally believe in staging. I see it work over and over, but if you're not going to stage, at least have it completely detailed like you would detail a car to sell it. Yeah, it's and amazing how many times you look at appraisals and the photographer goes in there and the pieces are dumb. completely, yeah, yeah. dirty. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Oh, crazy. And I, and I think that with HDTV and all the shows over the last 10, 15 years, people, yeah, yeah. Are, people really get it. But still, in most parts of the country, people don't really prepare their houses like we do here in the Bay Area. Um, so that's that's probably like maybe the you know fifth mistake. But the sixth mistake is you're going down your checklist to getting it ready for sale. And the biggest mistake that you could possibly make is overpricing, overpricing it. Yeah. Because you could do all of it right on all of the other things. But if you take a million dollar house, and instead of pricing it at nine ninety nine, you price it at a million two or a million three. You could have everything else be a home run. It's not going to sell. And you might end up getting less than your nine ninety nine. Price. You're going to end up probably like eight ninety nine or nine twenty five yeah. because of you know it's the longer it's on, the less you're going to get. So that's your that's your that's Those your very very good uh, yeah. um, suggestions. And then finally, limiting people limit showing up. Hours. Like they're so important. We've got a buyer schedule to deal with. We've got agent schedule. So don't limit your showing hours. Set, last mistake is relying too much on open houses. That's what most sellers do. They they just want open houses because that's all they see happening. Yeah, but there's mostly the brokers opens that really do the major sales. Open. Yeah, and you just do that. But if you do brokers opens, if you do any of them too much, it's the stale factor. Yeah. It's just not a good idea because everybody gets the impression that there's that house that's so hard to sell. How often are you seeing people, you know, paying too much money for making improvements to their home here in the Bay Area, given that home improvement prices are so high, labor is so high, materials are so high, because of where we live, the companies that distribute hardware, materials, lumber, granite, um, just everything just costs so, so much, and then the labor, oh, forget about it, I mean, just, you know, yeah. the, the, um, Superintendents for contractors that I work with are making nearly a hundred bucks an hour. I mean, it's just so, and I'm asking this because I know that I over, over improve the home I'm living in now. Mm -hmm. uh, I know That's that okay. if and when it's I sell tough. it, yeah. right? If and when I sell it, I'm I, depending on when. If I if I if I tried to sell it in the next several years, there's no way I would I would be able to ever do it. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Mm -hmm. But um, but I we improved it for us. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. however, I can see where you know. Where even if I, because originally when I bought it, I wanted to improve it to sell it. And we decided to let's let's look nicely and get it ourselves. Um, but I'm wondering now, thinking back, you know, had I used, for example, that same contractor, I probably wouldn't have been able to make the profit I made it and had to sell it at a loss, just because. Yeah. And again, part of it was I'm better at lending money than I am investing in real estate. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all have our strengths, right? Um, but do you find that uh, yeah. that? that People fall into that trap, especially here in the Bay Area, and they well, improve their house. That they're, you know, they're paying a lot more than they thought they would, and getting less value or, or multiplier on that money than they might have thought. Well, it's it's a really good question. You're smart to identify. I improved it for myself. Mm -hmm. The problem is most people do that, and then they expect to get every penny back and then some. And so they don't. If they're if that's your goal, don't do that. Yeah. And again, there's no accounting for taste either. That's the point. You you know, people, buyers will just come and say, well, I know it was done last week, you know, but I have to rip it all out. Yeah. You know. Yeah, especially swimming pools. <laughs> I know. Uh -huh. exactly. So, well, yeah, I see people over and through. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's see. We have uh, another minute before we have to go to break. When we come back, I know I want to ask you about crowdfunding, Mark. Uh, you want to take a, just a, a quick minute about something? So we've got, uh, um, I, I talked a little bit about uh, the fund yield earlier, and, and one of the things that I, the questions I get from a lot of people is, uh, um, you know, how come uh, private money rates for people who have been participating in mortgage investing, why have they been trending down, especially now that interest rates are going up? And that was also in response to uh, someone who asked me how much I thought, the, how I thought our fund was going to do 
in 2017 versus 2016, and I was explaining to them, well, you know, we distributed 8.2 in 2015, and in 2016, it, uh, it dropped slightly to 7.8, not a huge drop. Uh, and I am probably predicting about 7.5 for, for 2017. And the reason for that is, is that you know, private money rates actually continue to drop for reasons that I can even get into more detail later. Um, mortgage investing and mortgage pool funds throughout the state have been responding to the literally billions of dollars that have been coming in uh, from fintech companies and other financial technologies uh, and making loans actually cheaper for the private money sector. So it's been when impacting you, When we get back, mm -hmm. you're gonna continue on. We'll ask the trivia question next time. Perfect. Stay with us, the best of investing will be right back. Yeah, I didn't want to cut you off and I figured I'll just save the question. Okay, okay. good. I get yelled at by the uh, station last yeah. time for, uh, you know, the, 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 clock. The, the, the last, last clock was fine, but the one before that, that messed up, you know. Yeah. 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 Mark, why don't you continue, and then we'll ask your question. Sure. Welcome back to the Best of Investing, Edward Brown, Mark Hunt, and Patty Cohen here. Um, Mark, you were talking about why interest rates were trending down for investing. In right, so in mortgage investing, which includes investing in individual notes or investing in mortgage pool funds, um, in California, uh, because of all the money that has been pouring into the state, all the wealth, particularly in the Bay Area, and a lot of that wealth has been chasing yield, and We've called mortgage investing and, and uh, trustee investing one of the best kept secrets uh, in the investing community. And it used to be, and not so much anymore, uh, you know, thanks largely to companies like Pacific Private Money and our radio show, and we're talking about it, and other companies have been promoting themselves. And the so-called fintech industry, of which there's about 30-plus companies in the last couple of years that have sprung up that have been very well-funded, very well-capitalized with millions and millions of dollars that are that are have been entering this kind of you know middle lending market of, of people who um, are kind of in between bank financing and hard money hard money being say around 10 percent bank financing being around four to five percent uh, and so they've been coming out and serving this middle market actually creating a new market that didn't exist before uh, not subprime because subprime is completely different but this is really serving the market of borrowers who, you know, are really close but not quite attractive to banks, or they're doing things like buying, fixing, and flipping real estate, or doing construction loans, which a lot of banks still, 10 years after the mortgage uh, or the financial meltdown, are still haven't come back to making those types of loans. So there's a whole industry that's been created in the last several years of, uh, of, of lenders that are pursuing that uh, those borrowers and so what that has done is there's been a commoditization effect on private money borrowing and so people with better credit and um, better experience and better financial statements have been able to get better than the typical 10 percent let's call it hard money rate and so with rates, that, and they haven't gone down dramatically, but they've gone from 10 to nine and a half to nine to eight and a half, and some of some some uh, experienced re, uh, flippers, rehabbers, are seeing uh, private money rates from some companies as low as eight percent. Now, at Pacific Private Money, we've been able to maintain a certain uh, range of lending rates uh, between. You know, eight and a half and nine and a half to ten percent, and it can pretty much price you know, on a holistic basis, kind of based on how long you need money and, and what's it for, and is there more than one piece of collateral. But again, just to kind of wrap up this conversation about yield compression is what we call it in the industry. And when I go to industry events, that's a big topic is yield compression. And so I shared that 
um, specific kind of money fund, which is uh, which is an unleveraged fund. We don't use leverage to boost the yield. We simply uh, collect monies, we lend that out, and uh, and we and whatever the yield is, that's the income to the fund. Um, you know, we had uh, we had a payout um, to our fund members in 2015 at 8.2 percent. 2016 ended the year at 7.8 percent, and I'm predicting about a seven and a half percent payout uh, uh, thereabouts in, in 2017. Again, largely due to a continuing, uh, although dampening, uh, impact of, uh, of lots and lots of money out there chasing after you know, uh, a kind of a fixed borrowing community. And that, um, that kind of brings me to the question that we received from sure. you. It says, I've been reading a lot about crowdfunding sites and hearing them on the radio. I'm interested in investing in real estate, but want to know the difference uh, is between all these companies, including yours. So. That's an interesting question. So, um, you know, just to kind of wrap up what I'm talking about on the on the yield compression. So, um, yields for the types of loans that we make at Pacific Private Money and that other lenders, other private lenders and private lending companies, sometimes they're referred to as marketplace lenders as well. The term hard money or private money is kind of starting to go out the window and, and being replaced by this term marketplace lenders, meaning they use marketplace money, other people's money, your money, uh, to fund their real estate loans. And so we don't, uh, we make real estate loans, we don't buy real estate. So people who invest with Pacific Private Money are investing in a vehicle that makes mortgage secured loans. We don't do personal loans, we don't lend um, uh, on cars or other collateral, we only loan on real estate. and. There are other companies up there, though, uh, crowdfunding sites and other companies, and I'm not going to name names here, but there are companies where you can invest in real estate, not real estate notes, but invest in real estate through these crowdfunding sites. And every you need to investigate these different companies closely because some of them uh, can be a little bit confusing, and some of them, when you invest, even though they're buying real estate with your money, you don't actually own a piece of that real estate. You own a piece of the company. You're a member of the company. So again, you, you just need to, you need to make sure uh, what it is you're actually investing in. Alternatively, there are some of these newer FinTech companies, as I call them, or marketplace lenders, uh, that, are, that use crowdfunding to make loans, much like we do at Pacific Private Money. But unlike investing in an individual note, you're actually investing in an IOU from the company. So you don't have direct, you, your, your invested capital is not directly secured by the loans being made. Yeah. It's really being secured, it's really by unsecured company. by yeah. the company. So if the company fails, you actually don't have collateral security. So you really, again, you yeah, really need to that's investigate different. this. That's it's huge. much different, it's a huge difference actually. You're, you're absolutely right. So. So we do not do that. You're not uh, investing in an IOU when you invest in the Pacific Private Money Fund. There's only two assets in our fund, and when you invest money, you are an owner. You own a slice of that of that of that entity. Uh, it's formed as an LLC, as all mortgage pool funds are, uh, are LLCs in California, uh, and you're an owner of that LLC. And the only two assets that we have are cash and mortgage secured debt. So that's uh, it's very very simple structure. Again, for, for real for more information, uh, give us a call or go to our website at PacificPrivateMoney.com. You can read or download information. Of course, uh, we've got uh, brochures and more information we can send you. The offering circulars, all the disclosures. Uh, you can give us a call uh, anytime next week 415-883-2150 for more information. Great. And uh, when we come back, Patty. You Got a couple yep. of other things to talk about. Mark also we do. to ask you about if you got a deal of the deal week. Deal of the week. You bet you. We're going to have some uh, closing comments. Uh, our next segment's only going to last about five minutes, so we want to make sure that we uh, stay tuned. Good. It's going to be riveting. Riveting. <laughs> okay. Just like this question here, right? Yeah. Here's our third trivia question Which continent contains the largest number of Christians? All right, the first caller with the uh, correct answer wins a free tanning certificate to for three tanning services. Dan Bella, call 888-912-1190. That is 
912-1119 to answer that question. And actually, as it turns out, we have about 45 seconds left. I looked at the uh, wrong time on the clock. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. Is this the right time? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I did that, but... Uh, well, I can tell you one thing okay, that's going go on. There was a um, survey by the Foreign Investors in Real Estate found that 95% of international investors will maintain or increase their stakes in, U in the U.S. in 2017. Now, a well, lot... push prices up. Yeah. And I mean, th that's in spite of all of it that's going on, interest rates and Trump and all that. So the U.S. ranks as the most stable and secure country for real estate investors by a large margin, as well as the country that provides the best opportunity for capital appreciation. Investors cited a strong American economy and transparency as key reasons for their confidence. And more than that, oh, more than half believe that Brexit will positively affect the U.S. housing market. That, that, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Stay with us. The best of investing will be right back. There's perfect, a perfect timing. Oh, good. Thank you. I don't know how I did. I looked at the at the eight ten. Good. Like so how? So now we have what? How many? Five, five minutes. Five minutes and I want to make sure that you give out your information. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Any specific deal of the week, Mark? Um, yeah, I actually have a, a, a really um, really good construction on the desk that I really like. And it's not necessarily, it's probably not going to be a fund loan, or it might, it might be a piece of it, but it's just, it's just a, it's a, it's an example of a type of loan we really like. Okay. I really like. Um, the location on it's all Welcome back to the Best of Investing. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, along with Mark Honf and Patty Cohen. The trivia question was, which continent contains the largest number of Christians? I'm going to guess Africa. No. No, I mean, South America, maybe? Yes, South yeah. America. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Ooh. Okay, so Patty, um, before we cut out, um, we need to make sure that people know how to get a hold of you. They have questions about selling real estate or buying real estate. Oh, yeah, I'm happy just to give advice. I don't get paid unless it closes, and I give a lot of advice all day long. So I'm Patty Cohn with Pacific Union Real Estate. I'm at 415-722-4842. And you can always go to the Best Investing website and see Patty's picture there. Uh, Mark, uh, give us a deal of the week. So <coughs> we got a construction loan uh, request that I really like, and when we got it, I was just amazed that this guy couldn't go get bank financing or a bank construction loan. And it's just, you know, just an example of, of how to, in today's market, you know, we're still far from um, a, a situation where uh, banks have, you know, gone back to lending like uh, they were. Well, I just I don't think it's, it's ever going to go back, at least not in our generation, to the way loans were being made 10 years ago. And so the property is in El Dorado Hills. It's in a nice neighborhood. It's an infill lot, meaning there's homes to the left and to the right. This particular lot hasn't been built up yet. Um, and... I know El Dorado Hills well because uh, my uncle's a general contractor up there for the last 30 years, and so uh, he likes the neighborhood here that, that I, I really like. Um, the borrower owns the property free and clear, and he's looking for 100% construction financing to build a home, but he also has another property that's free and clear, and he's offering that up as collateral as well. Oh, hmm. And he has a general contractor who has experience, but the general contractor's financials um, he's got good experience, but his financials aren't strong. So this whole mix, the cross-collateralization, the general contractor with, with the lack of impressive financials, make it so that he has been unable to get a bank to be interested in making the size of the loan. He can get a lower loan from a bank, but he would they would require him to come up with more, more capital, gotcha. which would mean going out and getting maybe a loan on his other property. So... And what's your big risk if uh, the general contractor, uh, you know, the, his financials? Well, well, here's here's the well. There, I don't, we don't think there's a risk, and, and this is what's uh, what a lot of people don't understand. Some note investors will say will, will be, you know, they'll jump at the chance to invest in someone who's buying, fixing, and flipping a property, you know, a note secured by that property, versus a construction from ground up. But here's the thing: with when you're doing ground up construction, depending on how you release the money. You know, you're you're releasing the money as value is being added to the property. Now, what happens when you make a loan on a property that guy's going to remodel? 
Well, you're helping him buy the house the next, and then the day after you help him buy the house, he goes in there and, and tears half the house apart. Oh, He's actually diminished the value. And, and what if he decides to walk because he discovers something unexpected? So there's yeah. oftentimes there's more risk in a rehab, in a remodel loan than there is in new construction. So again, given the collateral, the high FICO and net worth of the borrower and the contractor, we really like this loan. So again, we use a holistic approach uh, and we're very subjective about the way we analyze these things. There might have you know a couple of things on there that weren't uh, the way they were, and we would have you know said no. Again, we say no most of the time at, at Pacific Pilot Money, not because we want to be mean, but we're looking for specific loans that we believe that they're. Uh, we like the collateral, we like the borrower, we like the exit strategy, i.e., how they're going to pay us off. And again, if all three of those things come together, we look. We generally look for a way to say yes and make the deal happen. Which, which is why you have a very low default rate. Well, that's exactly right. We've done 1,200 loans, a little more than 1,200 loans since uh, 2008, and we've had less than 10 foreclosures. So our percentage of default is actually less than uh, the conventional loan uh, industry out there. So Very good. So, uh, check us out, PacificPilotMoney.com. All right. And Patty, again, give you out your number. Patty Cohn, C-O-H-N, Pacific Union, 415-722-4842. Perfect. All right. Here's our thoughts for the day. Be more concerned with your character than your reputation, because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. Mm. John Wooden, coach, said that. Uh, and remember Dr. J from the Philadelphia 76ers? Mm -hmm. He said, being a professional is doing the things you love to do on the days you don't feel like doing And that is so true. Good point. Tune in next week to The Best of Investing. We're going to be giving away more free prizes for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. Wishing you the best of investing. So long. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that Excellent guy. keto. Uh, hopefully, uh, I will good. be set for next.